Thank you all for coming today. Today I'll be giving a talk on the rapid repair of reinforced concrete columns using a mechanically fastened steel jacket. Um, so to summarize what I'll be going over in this presentation today, I'll start with some background and then the objectives of these experiments and then the test setup and experimental test results and then some conclusions. So to start with the background, um, for a reinforced concrete column like the one you see here, when it is subjected to um, any type of lateral loading induced by an earthquake uh, in a well-designed modern reinforced concrete column, the damage will um, accumulate down at the bottom in a plastic hinge region where the moment demand is the highest. And the level of damage that occurs in this plastic hinge can go anywhere from the steel yielding and concrete cracking all the way up to bar buckling and bar fracture. And in the case of bar fracture, traditionally that would be what is considered um, beyond the point of repair for a reinforced concrete bridge. Um, but the goal of this project was to uh, relocate this plastic hinge by uh, placing a steel jacket backfilled with grout and um, moving the new plastic hinge to a higher undamaged location of the column. So the way that is done is first you assess the level of initial damage that the column has seen, whether that's bar buckling, bar fracture, how many bars fractured, and then you determine how much additional reinforcing steel is required to go into the section, and then uh, holes will be drilled in the footing that allows for the um, additional longitudinal reinforcement to be anchored into the footing, uh, and then the steel sleeve is placed around that additional reinforcement and then it is backfilled with grout and that um, completes the repair process. And then when the next uh, seismic loading occurs, the moment capacity at this location above where you just completed the repair uh, is the same, at, should be the same as what you have and in the initial column at the base. So, um, one thing to keep in mind with these highly damaged columns is that initially, uh, when the column is constructed, you'll have this L bend in the longitudinal bars that anchors the reinforcing steel into the footing and provides the development length, uh, which gives the tension steel its strength. Um, however, once the bar is fractured, you lose the continuity with that L and it is no longer anchored into the footing and you're relying on the bond between the bar and the uh, depth that it is embedded into the repair to uh, give the longitudinal bar its development and develop its strength. So the objective of this repair is to use a bolted steel jacket, um, which will allow for a rapid implementation in the field because it requires no special labor and can be done quickly and to fully anchor those bars that had fractured to prove that um, even columns that have fractured bars can be repaired. And um, looking at the implications of using a bolted steel jacket to anchor these bars by preventing the slip of the bolted connection, preventing the yielding of the steel sleeve and improving the bond conditions of the fractured bars. So, um, to test these repairs, we took reinforced concrete columns as part of a different research project that had been previously tested by anchoring them to a strong floor and applying a lateral load uh, with an actuator anchored to a strong wall and applying um, axial load, 5% uh, axial load representative of the actual load that would be on the column in a real bridge and um, pushing it back and forth to simulate the earthquake. And then in the repair tests, they were uh, subjected to the exact same displacement history. And then to instrument these columns, the cover concrete was intentionally blocked out so that these OptiTrack LED markers could be placed on the longitudinal and transverse steel. And this allowed to capture the uh, 3D position of the LED and therefore the steel. Uh, throughout the duration of the test. And then by uh, tracking the changes in those positions of the steel LEDs, 
um, we could calculate the strains in the steel at any point throughout the test. So for this first repair, the objective to, was to replace a welded connection that had been used in previous repairs with the bolted connection that you see here um, for the reasons I stated earlier about um, just improving the ease of constructability of the connection. So for these first columns, the, the diameter was a 24 inch diameter column reinforced with 16 um, number six uh, grade 80 uh, reinforcing steel bars. And the damage state that was seen in the first test was um, seven fractured bars that you see here. And then it was repaired using the additional reinforcing steel that you see here. And this is the area with the backfilled grout. Um, and the height of the repair was approximately equal to the diameter of the column. So after testing, um, the bars that fractured in this repair were not the ones that had fractured in the original column test, but now it went to the next most extreme bars, this S6 and N6 bar. They were the bars that had the highest demand um, in this test uh, due to the debonding that occurs in the previously fractured bars. And also in this uh, damage condition picture, you can see that there was quite a bit of damage um, to the top of the repair grout and the plastic hinge was not relocated fully to the area above the um, repair like we would want it to for a predictable response. Um, so looking at the global response of this repair and comparing it to the uh, force displacement response of the original column, you can see that the repair has a much more pinched response. And additionally, you see some softening of the response once it gets up to the peak, it starts to drop off, um, which does not match with the original, which continues to increase all the way up until bar fracture. So um, looking at the reason for this, um, there was some evidence in the experiment that the plates at the bolted connection may have um, slipped relative to each other as evidenced by the break in the silicone seal that was placed to um, block the grout prior to casting. Um, and this slip between the plates would uh, lead to a loss of confinement, um, which would allow the previously fractured bars to debond during this test. And looking at more evidence of this by looking at some of the strain data captured by the OptiTrack LEDs for one of these um, previously fractured bars, looking at their strains throughout the duration of the test, we see that that is indeed the case where um, the bar uh, when put in tension increases in strain until a certain point where then it drops off rather than continuing to contribute to the um, tensile response of the column. And to compare this with the bar um, strains of the bar that did fracture during the test, we can see that one here. And this is what you would typically expect for the strains to continue to increase all the way up until you get to bar buckling and ultimately bar fracture, and you never have this drop off in strength. So the objective of the next repair was to prevent this plate slip by um, pre-tensioning these bolts with a calibrated torque wrench that would apply um, sufficient clamping force to keep the plates from slipping and therefore maintain the same level of confinement throughout the duration of the test. Um, so this repair had the original column had a similar damage condition to the first, only five fractured bars, but um, the ones next to it were severely buckled, very similar to the first. Um, and the only change was the um, now inclusion of the pretension bolts, which would um, maintain higher confinement forces throughout the test. And the results of this test, you see again that these, the bars that fractured were again, the next most extreme bars rather than the bars that fractured in the initial test. Um, and again, you see quite a bit of damage to the top of the repair grout. However, 
um, looking at the global response and comparing it to the previous repair, you can see that there is some improvement. There's less pinching than you saw in the original. Um, so uh, clamping these plates together and preventing the slip does improve the response. Um, however, it still does allow the bars to debond. Um, as you can see, again, looking at that same bars strain throughout the duration of the test, um, we see that again, we get to some peak strain before the bars ultimately debond. But comparing this bar to the bar that, um, to the same bar from the first test, we see that we have um, delayed this debonding to a um, higher ductility for the column, and we reached a higher ultimate strain before it debonded. So we did improve the response. Um, however, we were still not able to prevent the debonding of the bars. And the um, hypothesized reason for that was looking at the strains of the, um, from the LEDs on the sleeve, we can see that the strains exceeded the yield, st yield strain for the sleeve, uh, which led to, um, again, a loss of confinement because the sleeve never goes back to its original position when you're going from the pushing to the pulling direction for the column. So for this third repair, the uh, goal was to increase the thickness of the sleeve uh, to almost double what we had used before um, to prevent it from yielding, uh, which would allow for greater confining forces throughout the duration of the test. Um, another um, element that was looked at in this test um, because it had an equal number of fractured bars on each side, we were able to um, do a comparison of the bond conditions on each side. So on one side of the column, it was left how it was um, in its initial damaged condition, um, just like it had been done in all of the previous repairs. While on the other side, the uh, damaged concrete that had been cracked in the initial test was removed around the fractured bars along the height of the repair to allow for when you're pouring the new grouts um, to create a stronger bond between this um, steel and the new fresh grout, which would allow for better bond throughout the duration of the test. So looking at the results of this test, the goal was to have a steel sleeve that did not yield. And as you can see from the strain data, um, that was true. Uh, the sleeve strains were pretty low throughout the entire test. Um, and then first looking at this uh, non-chip side where we um, uh, had the same conditions as the previous tests, um, we once again had bar fracture of the um, next most extreme bars. Um, but looking at this same uh, previously fractured bar uh, one last time, we can see that again, we have this debonding um, that happens in this and comparing to the um, previous test, we did have um, higher ultimate strain um, before it ultimately debonded again. Um, however, looking at the chipped side, uh, we were able to fracture um, bars N3, N4, and N5, which were all three of the bars that had fractured in the initial test, which means they were fully anchored um, during this test. And comparing these two sides, um, we see that on the chipped side, we have more damage to the top of the repair grout, where on the north side, we have the plastic hinge forming directly above the repair exactly where we want it. Um, and then looking at the global response, and comparing it to the original column, we can see that the pinching that we saw in the earlier experiments is basically eliminated and the um, softening um, also has decreased significantly. So in conclusion, the global response is dependent on the anchorage of fractured bars. Um, increasing confinement will improve the bond of these fractured bars and a combination of chipping perimeter concrete and a thicker steel sleeve can fully anchor a fractured bar.
Thank you. So thank you, Taylor, for your nice presentation and keeping it within the time. Okay, no questions. So I have one quick question, Taylor. Like, what was your uh, performance objectives when you applied those uh, retrofitting techniques for your damaged bridge piers? My performance objective was to um, restore the uh, displacement capacity of the original column, as well as the um, uh, load carrying capacity. Okay, okay, thank you. So thank you again, uh, Taylor.